Morning, another day, another real world test. Today, we're doing it on the Oppo Find X3 Pro, the little curvaceous phone. Still not sure how I feel about that. We'll talk about that later. But in this video, I'm gonna use this phone as my normal phone. My SIM card is in it. I'm gonna use it throughout my day. Um, I will check in on the battery throughout that day. And also we'll take photos on it and some of its competitors and put those up on the screen so you guys can check that out as well. But first things first. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. Here for David, yeah? Okay, now real quick, let me explain where we are. This is the Brooklyn Navy Yard, or well, we're just outside of it, but the Brooklyn Navy Yard came into existence because at the end of John Adams, which is the second president of the United States' his term, he decided that the United States needed a really strong Navy, and he commissioned five large Navy Yards, with the Brooklyn Navy Yard being one of them. It was finished in 1801, and for the next 165 years, some of America's craziest warships were all built here. The USS Arizona, the Missouri, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. At its peak during World War II, there were some 70,000 people working at this yard. In 1966, however, it was sold to New York City, and it started a 300-acre uh, development project in its place. And now, there's some pretty cool tenants, which I think we should check out. Inside of this thing now is a bunch of like manufacturing companies and tech startups. There's even apartment buildings in here. I even saw a sign for like a self-driving car, which is interesting. But this whole thing is guarded by a giant gate all the way around it. I mean, go figure, it's a Navy Yard. But you have to find the right gate to go in to get to the place that you want to go that's on the inside. Like, in other words, the closest one to that location, otherwise they won't let you in. It's all very restricted. So right now I'm trying to find uh, which is the right gate. I think this is supposed to be an arrow to tell me where to go. I'm not sure, but let's try. Welcome to the first commercially viable rooftop vineyard called Rooftop Reds. So basically they built these 42 special planters to plant their vines in, and it covers this almost 15,000 square foot rooftop. Now, they do also have a vineyard out in the Finger Lakes region where most of their wine comes from, of course, because this still isn't very big for a vineyard, but they produce about 20 to 25 cases of wine from this roof. But if we're honest, it's still just like the coolest tasting room ever, right? Look who decided to join. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello. Only 40 minutes late, come on man. <laughs> First day of spring in New York City. Off to a good start. But real quick, let's talk about the styling of this phone. So I feel like the most noticeable thing about this device that everyone's talking about is this kind of, well, curved camera bump on the back. Now, personally, look, I know they took like 40 hours to create each piece of glass and it's like a bunch of measurements and it's like, like engineering wise, this is very difficult to do. And so that's kind of cool. I appreciate that, but I'm not, I'm not sold on the look. I personally, it's. I would rather actually just have like the normal square straight lines, but that's just more my style. Curious what you guys think though. Let me know in the comments. Now, regardless, it is IP68 certified. So spills and drops and underwater for 30 minutes up to uh, 1.5 meters, all of that stuff. Now for the screen, we have an adaptive 120 Hertz display. So that means it'll go up to 120 Hertz or refresh itself 120 times per second. It will also go down to about five to save battery life. And it does that based on whatever you're doing on the screen. There's no way to bin it to 120. It just kind of decides for you, but it feels very smooth, honestly. And we'll see how the battery life is by the end of today. 
Also, the screen itself has a peak brightness of 1300 nits, but regardless, I'm sitting here on a rooftop in bright sun. I can see the screen just fine, so that's all I really care about. And something I thought was kind of interesting, uh, Oppo put software in here to adjust the screen's colors for specific types of colorblindness. I don't know, just I just appreciate that. Now, while we're here, since we haven't done it yet, let's check in on the battery. It is 1.34 p.m., and we are at 67%. You want a kiss? <laughs> Goodbye, John. <laughs> See you later. Okay, so um, Sean has left us because he has a rugby game to go watch, and we are now going to try to find the next place, which is a distillery, which I'm excited about. But we have no idea where it is in this entire place. Found it. This is actually the Kings County Distillery. Cheers, Cheers madam. <laughs> so this place was first located in a 325 square foot location in East Williamsburg, which is closer to where I live. Kings County is the actual name for the county that Brooklyn is located in. And then in 2012, they moved into what is the Paymaster building here in the Navy Yard. That's kind of poetic because the Brooklyn Whiskey Wars took place nearby here, which is where there were about 20 whiskey distilleries that were all illegal, and the government decided to, well, with the force of an army, come in and stop them all. And they actually do these whiskey tasting classes, which is what we're about to do. But first, let's talk about the camera on this phone. So I think this is the first phone I've seen that has the same flagship sensor in two of the cameras, the main and the ultra ride. They are both the Sony IMX 766 50 megapixel f2.2 with the ultra wide and f1.8 on the wide sensor. And they're been to 12.5 megapixels normally. And actually I really like this concept because normally when you switch from like your main camera to the ultra wide or the telephoto, it's just not as good. Like the sensors are not as large. They kind of spend all of their money on the main one and they kind of, the other ones are secondary. This means that the lens itself is different, but the sensor is the same. And that means, well, better quality, more bokeh, and also means it's probably easier to get a consistent color science across at least those two cameras. Now, would I love to see them do this in the telephoto as well? Of course, but I feel like all these things probably add cost, and so this is the beginning. But I think we're gonna see, and I really hope, that we start to see the same big sensors in all of the different cameras on the phones. We do also have an f2.8 telephoto, five times hybrid zoom. Um, so it's optical up to a certain point, and then it's using digital and optical together to get uh, down to the five times. And it's okay, I would say five times, it's not the sharpest like it would be if it was totally optical, um, but it's not bad. And I do think they did do a good job of getting the color science and all the other stuff to kind of match between all three of these sensors. And speaking of the color science, I actually kind of like it on this camera. I think it has a really good contrast to it. Like the blacks are really dark and the whites are really white. And now it might be a subjective thing, but I, I think it looks pretty good. And lastly, we have a three megapixel micro camera. Not to be confused with macro, there is a macro mode that it will automatically switch to when you get close to something. This is micro, as in microscope. And this is a specialized camera that allows you to get a 30 times and 60 times zoom on something up close. You essentially have to put the phone on the thing. Uh, and it even has a ring light to help illuminate that for that camera. And it does, you know, mimic a microscope. Now, is this that useful? I don't know. I mean, it's a different type of a shot that you could get, which is cool. I think though over time it's gonna kind of lose its novelty. I think a lot of people think it's interesting and even my friends when I was showing them, they were like, oh, that's so cool. But I don't think after a certain amount of time you're gonna be using it that often, but maybe that's just me. Okay, so that was a great whiskey tasting. I learned a lot, that was very good actually. Um, but Olivia had to leave early because she's gotta meet Jean for dinner and I need to find dinner myself now. But here in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, it's a little weird. Everything seems to be closing at seven. I don't know if that's a COVID thing or just all the time, it's a Saturday night. So, I don't know. So, uh, we might have to head back to my neighborhood to grab dinner. Now we've made it to a little uh, 
Italian place that I like near my apartment. We're no longer in the Navy Yard called Doc Wine Bar. We're just like unpretentious. Makes a good pasta. Uh, has really nice outdoor seating right now because I don't really want to be inside because of COVID, at least not yet. And some decent heaters as well. But while we're here, I kind of want to talk about the software of the phone. I just feel like Oppo gets the most improved award when it comes to their software design. I used to not like it at all, if I'm being honest. And the last few iterations though, it definitely looks a lot cleaner, a lot more minimalistic, which is a subjective thing that I like, but still, I like it. And they also added in a ton of customization options, which I appreciate as well, from changing the icons to the home screen layout, the obviously the wallpaper, but you can also change the uh, always on display to a ton of different widgets. You can even change the edge lighting that happens whenever you get a notification, etc., etc. I just, I just like that. Okay, now let's head out of here, um, head home, and we can wrap this up before the phone dies because it is 8:23 p.m. and we are at seven percent. Okay, calling it a night because I believe we have to. It is 8.51 p.m. and we are at 3%. And now here's my screen on time and my usage for anyone who's curious about that. And also here's uh, another day, yesterday, for anyone who's curious about a more typical day, I would say. There you go, the Oppo Find X3 Pro real world test. Let me know what you guys thought of this phone, of this video in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Uh, and if you want more videos like this, please subscribe and ding the bell next to where it's subscribed so you get notified when I do new videos here on the channel. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.